Hey everybody, this is Joe with My Way Mods, and today we're over at JNCS and we're going to test out some new hardware. And we're also going to test out the uh, new Ice Bear 240 water cooler. Uh, you saw Kevin do it in our previous unboxing video. Um, we showed you all the nooks and crannies and bits and pieces. Today we're going to actually show you uh, how this actually functions with um, it just idle on a chip and also overclock. So I'm going to hand it over to Colin um, and he's going to tell you all the pieces that we're using in this build today. Well, hi everyone, my name is Colin with JNCS. Uh, the case that we're using today is a Thermaltake Core X5. The motherboard is an Asus X99 Deluxe 2. CPU is an Intel Core i7 6850K. Um, we're also using for cooler a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. SSD we're using is a uh, Samsung 950 Pro, uh, 512 gig. And the video card is a Gigabyte GTX uh, 1070. So we're going to do some comparisons of overclocking and temperatures uh, using the Cooler Master air cooler versus the water cooler. i7 6850K is a um, hexa-core chip with hyper-threading. Um, its stock speeds at uh, is 3.6 gigahertz and it overclocks or excuse me, turbos uh, up to 4.0. Uh, when we did some testing uh, on idle temperatures, it was sitting real good at about 24-25 degrees. Uh, when running prime at the tur full turbo speeds at 4.0 across all six cores, it was hitting about 91. We also ran uh, an overclocking test as well. We got the chip running up to 4.3 gigahertz uh, across all six cores. Uh, max temps, though, were right at the thermal throttle threshold of 99 degrees. Um, so basically, without spending a long, long time trying to dial in the exact right voltage, once you start getting into the territory of 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz or more, uh, this chip or this air cooler is really not adequate to dissipate the heat quickly enough. So what we're looking forward to next is hooking up this water cooler and seeing if uh, you know that brings the temps down and maybe lets us increase the clock speeds at the same time. The stock temperature is actually dropped by about 4 to 5 degrees C. Um, when it's sitting at idle, it's only running at about 20, and when you're running prime, it's actually running at 79 degrees C, so a good drop of uh, about 12 degrees C, uh, C overall on that. Overclocking results were a little bit mixed, but still better uh, than the air cooler, really no question on that. Um, idle temperatures while running at 4.3 gigahertz was at 22 degrees, and running prime 95, we had a max temp of 94. Um, one of the reasons that's happening is because these new 6th gen i7 chips run very, very hot under an extreme workload like Prime95 does. So, um, But overall, really good experience. I mean, the cooler's real quiet, it uh, looks nice, and uh, you know, definitely drop temps uh, quite a bit compared to the uh, Hyper 212 Evo, so nothing but good things to report. Well, one negative, I guess, is the tubing on here isn't quite as flexible as it looks, so a case like this when you have a board that's uh, you know, you don't have a lot of clearance or room between where the radiator is going to sit. If I move the radiator down here, it probably wouldn't be as bad. I mean, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's even on because it makes so little noise. It's not, I guess, a negative, but it, it's so quiet that sometimes you question if it's even working. All right, so that wraps up the review on the Ice Bear 240. Um, I want to thank Colin and thank JNCS for giving us these parts to test um, the Ice Bear unit on. Um, JNCS is a great company. They sell lots of new high-end computer equipment. Check them out on JNCS.com or you can also check them out on Amazon as well. They just got a whole bunch of CPUs on there if you guys are looking for it. They always got 1080, 1070 cards that they're getting in all the time. So thanks again. If you like these videos, please share, subscribe, and thanks again.